Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here, and before I get started on what I want to talk about today, I just want to give a big thank you to everyone that has, you know, supported my VGX video, my rant. <laughs> um, uh, physically, it, it took quite a bit out of me to do that, and I was really happy to see that you guys enjoyed it, um, and you guys are... are still like mailing me compliments about it commenting on the video I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting from it and just I just want to say a simple thank you um, uh, another thing I, I don't the, the people that are like oh he should do rants more often um, I like to do rants but I don't like to do them like so many times because it just starts to get kinda of boring for me but you know if something comes up, uh, I was originally going to do a rant about the, the Fallout 4 site being a hoax and how the, the guy behind it pretty much said fuck you to everyone, pretty much said fuck you to the Fallout fan base. I was going to do a rant about that, um, and I actually recorded it, but, you know, I just, I kind of, I went away from my computer for a while, and when I came back, I kind of just didn't really want to do it anymore, because it's just, whatever, it's not that big of a deal in the long run, where, like, the Spike VGX kind of is, in a way. Uh, so I pretty much poured a lot of my anger. I still was angry as fuck about the Spike VGX, but some of that, that rage in my voice was coming from the Fallout 4 stuff as well. So in spirit, I morphed the two fucked up things together into one just gigantic piss pissing rant. So... There's that. No, what I want to talk about today is, um, I can't believe it, but I'm just finding out this morning on the, the couple cold ones show that was released today that Spill.com will be no more as of the end of December. And that, that saddens me a lot, um, because these guys, uh, Corey, Leon, Cyrus, co-host, Carla, uh, they have been a big inspiration and influence on me for the past five years, and I just really, I'm really sad that they're going away. I knew I'd have to, we'd have to face the day one day where this site would no longer be, um, but I never expected it to be this soon, and I really never expected it to be this abrupt, so... You know, hey, I just want to talk about, like, how they've influenced me. I just want to give... It's kind of like uh, when I was listening to a couple of colons this morning, how, how Leon described it perfectly, how people have been, like, emailing him about how it's kind of like a, 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 a waking funeral where, like, you're alive still, but people are kind of, like, sending you shit as if you were uh, dead. <laughs> because So I'm going to call this, like, my Spill.com eulogy. And let me get started. Um, you know, to further articulate why these guys... Because hearing this news, I'm not easily saddened by a lot of stuff. I mean, I was sad when, like, recently, like, when Paul Walker died. Um, but that didn't affect me personally. This is personally. Um, but this is really, really sad. It's like when Roger Ebert died. I mean, that just really got me in kind of a mini depression and... While I'm not in a mini depression about this, I'm still very sad, and I want to talk about, you know, what they've meant to me, and in order to do that, i got to provide some background history. So, I discovered Corey and the gang back in 2008, uh, through their video reviews on YouTube, and at the time, I was obsessed with finding pretty much every glowing review I could think of, of The Dark Knight. And, boy, did, did I get it with these guys. I mean, I was immediately drawn in by their style of criticism, their wittiness, and their charming sense of humor. It, it became my mission over the next week to find everything they had ever done and watch the hell out of it. I mean, I even found some of their stuff from the Real Deal show they used to do. And I downloaded a lot of their videos on my iPod. And then, when I discovered they had uncensored audio reviews on their site as well, 
I went bananas. I, I remember uh, I, the first audio review I ever listened to was from Carlisle's early review of the Star Trek reboot, where he actually got to see it with um, Leonard Nimoy, the lucky bastard. <laughs> Uh, and as much as I enjoyed that review, uh, I became especially fascinated with it for two reasons. One, I finally got to hear them swear without the, the damn beeping noises. And two, I learned that people could actually go to advanced screenings of films weeks ahead of its public release. That shit blew my mind at the time. It was just awesome, and from then on, my admiration for these guys grew even bigger, and it finally reached a point where they would they became like my daily routine. They became part of my daily routine, where I would begin the week thinking, okay, I have a couple of cold ones on Monday, I have Let's Do This on Wednesday, and I have their reviews on Friday, and maybe something else on Saturday. And I look forward to each and everything they did for every week for all of 2009, 2010, 2011, most of 2012 and 2013. Well, why did I become so interested in these guys? I could list multiple things, but I'm going to list the most important factor for me, which was the humor. I mean, Corey Coleman has said on multiple occasions that he's always seen Spill.com as a comedy show, as an entertainment show. Uh, to say that Spill.com is hilarious is selling them woefully short. Their ability to blend intelligence, insight, and humor is extraordinary and Corey, Leon, Cyrus, Carlisle and co-host have that special gift where they could talk about any film no matter the subject matter no matter how depressing it is no matter uh, if it's like critically panned critically acclaimed somewhere in the middle they always found a way to add humor to it and it mixed with the the insight and talking like flawlessly um, a recent example of this would be their review for um, 12 Years a Slave. Even though the film's subject matter is so grim and deeply disturbing, these guys found a way to make their review of it entertaining as hell. I mean, I must have listened to it about five times in a row. And it was actually the review that sold me on the movie. And I was, I was looking forward to seeing it anyway because I admire the hell as Steve McQueen's last movie, Shame. Uh, but this was the review that really sold me on it, and I think the day that I heard their review was the day I went to go see it. Because I heard their review, and I went, oh shit, I gotta go fucking see this movie now. And thankfully it was playing near me, and even on my way to the theater, I was playing their review in my car. And I, that is how much I, I like these guys and admire them. Um, you know, Spill.com also taught me something during my teenage years that I owe the world to them for. I mean, when I was around 15 or 16, I had this really shallow belief. Looking back now, I just want to slap myself that independent, foreign, and like pre-1980s films were boring and made to please pretentious film snobs and egomaniacal critics. And that really all changed when I started listening more to Spill.com. Uh, these guys taught me that independent films, really hardcore art house stuff, and classic film is stuff to be appreciated, you know, and loved by all. I always saw Spill, the Spill crew as these, like, laid-back, everyday dudes. And here they were praising films by directors like Godard, and Kurosawa, Bergman, Jarmusch, and, and others. Without Spill.com, I would probably still be holding that onto that shallow, ridiculous point of view. And my maturity as a lover of film wouldn't have progressed at all. Spill.com taught me a valuable lesson when it came to the art of film criticism. And it's that every film is unique in its own way. Even if it sucks ass. And that we should always remember that and take note of that whenever we are watching film. And another thing I owe to Spill.com is that they taught me to have confidence in my film taste. I mean, they taught me I shouldn't be bothered or upset when someone vehemently disagrees with me on a film. And that everyone has an opinion. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, no matter how much it differs from my own. Uh, everyone has their right to speak their mind. And that I definitely learned, especially from Corey, because he kept stating that over and over and over again, that everyone has an opinion, everyone has the right to express it. And that I should not be afraid to express my own opinion as well, even if it goes against the grain. 
I mean, no matter how many times they expressed really unpopular opinions, they were fearless and uncompromising. They had balls, which is something I feel like a lot of professional critics lack these days. I mean, whenever I get shit for disagreeing with the popular opinion and get called a retard and a, and a snooty, pretentious film snub, I always remember these guys. I always think, what would these guys do? They would stand their ground, they would stick to what they thought was right, and they would keep that thought. And they would... Ugh, they are awesome. They are my inspiration. And lastly, Spill.com was a major source of comfort for me. And whenever I would have a shitty day or something bad would happen, I would, and still continue to, to turn to these guys for laughter and joy, because you would never fail, they would never fail to put a smile on my face. And even no matter how crappy my day was, no matter what happened to me, these, I could always find solace in being able to come home, turn on my computer, and listen to these guys. And not even turn on my computer, I have a lot of their podcasts on my iTouch that I listen to all the time, and that I find such joy and laughter and inspiration from. And, um, probably some of my biggest laughs I got from these guys. I remember when I first started listening to Let's Do This. I remember, I, I forget the episode, but it was an episode where they were talking about Star Trek. It was, you know, Corey and co-host, where co-host made this joke. I don't remember what it was, but I remember it had me laughing for a good two minutes straight. Where I literally, I was doing my homework, I remember sitting at my table, I was doing my homework, I had my laptop in front of me and I was listening to these guys, and I literally had to just stop my homework because I was laughing so hard. And when they say laughter is the best medicine, they aren't fucking kidding. And Spill.com is one of like the best places to get this medicine. <laughs> because they are just such a pleasure and joy to listen to. I love these guys. So, you know, Mr. Coleman, I doubt you will ever hear this, and I doubt we will ever speak in real life, but I just wanted to take the time to put this out there and say thank you. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, co-host. Thank you, Cyrus. Thank you, Carlisle. Thank you to everyone that was involved with Spill.com. Thank you from the very deepest recesses of my heart you have no idea how much of an inspiration you guys are to me and how much i owe to you guys into making me the man i am today and i will miss spill.com deeply and i wish you guys the best of luck with where you go next in life and if you guys move on to some new site or project i will be there to support it because you guys are just awesome you guys really have just been a huge source of inspiration to me. You've been just a complete uh, joy to my life. And I, I'm so thankful to have had the pleasure of discovering you guys and listening to the, you guys for these past five years. And even when Spell.com is gone, I will continue to listen to your reviews. I will continue to... There was a time... <laughs> Uh, when I had my laptop before it broke, that I would leave it on all night listening to you guys. Uh, just any podcast I could find, because you guys have that playlist on there. Um, so, yeah, this is... Thank you. Thank you, Spill.com. And I will miss you very deeply. And this is Razorblade Mango, signing off. <laughs>